<laughs> okay, we are doing our first driving impressions video. And we thought this would just be like kind of a fun little series to have me drive the car. And then also we wanna like go do something with it. So I think today we're just gonna go to the Target parking lot. And like, we know how it's gonna perform, but like let's just like see the vibes, I don't know. One thing I'm always big about with the car too is like how you feel in the car when you're driving it. I just feel like as mothers, we give up so much of our identity to become moms, everything from our body to our careers to our personal life that I just won't live in a world where we also have to give up how we feel when driving a vehicle. Does it have auto hold? No, it doesn't. No, that's auto off off. I love auto hold, but this car does not have it. Do I get to do the Jeep wave in this thing? No, you don't. It's like that's only like a, a Wrangler thing. That's a Wrangler thing. Okay, so we are on the road. We're doing a little bit of city driving, and this thing has a 5.7 liter V8. It gets about 392 horsepower. Can tow with, when equipped up to 10,000 pounds, which is a lot, and she is a heavy vehicle. It is almost 6,000 pounds, and some of the models are over 6,000 pounds, so you can definitely feel how heavy the vehicle is when you're driving it. Um, but because of that V8, I do feel like I still have some really good acceleration and I just feel really solid in the car. Give it a go, accelerate. Okay. Now's your time. I would say that's pretty good pickup for this car. Yeah. I mean, I feel like really, I really like it. It's a little bumpy. It's a little bumpy. It has an air ride suspension, so you could adjust it as needed. I'm not gonna mess with that. Yeah. Um, as a regular high-did person, I'm five five, so this is high. This feels high to you. This feels high. I mean, you could I'm also put to... your seat up, probably. <laughs> you hate when I do that. No, no, like put it up this way. Yeah. Brakes are a little touchy. Brakes are a little touchy. Um, and I mean, like I said, it's a heavy car, so to have, so I actually enjoy that the brake, the brakes are pretty responsive because I feel like, I mean, it could take a lot to stop a car that's six thousand pounds. So let's kind of do a little. It's pretty smooth, actually. Don't yeah. you think? Can we just go to Target? Let's just drive around. Let's try to go park it, like in in between. Like that's where I want to go. Okay, I'm gonna go for this parking spot. It's between a curb and a Toyota Camry, and the Toyota Camry did not do me any favors. But that's why this is important. Oh yeah, I got this. I freaking got this. I got it. I did it. Let's put it in reverse. Yeah. Okay, that wasn't, that was pretty good. I'm impressed, I did it. Not that like I didn't think I could park a car in, in the lines. Wow, this is not, I'm gonna get a lot of hate on this video, aren't I? Oh well. Oh, my parking sensors were even off. Oh gosh. <laughs> okay, come back in, Betsy. Okay, anyway, let's go back on the open road. So we can park it, I feel good about the Target parking lot. I feel like I'm having fun here. It really does, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a big car. I don't feel like I'm driving a small car, but I do feel like it handles well. I don't feel like I'm driving like a, a big boat or anything. Like I feel like it's got a little bit of zip. Okay, so as far as like the fuel efficiency of the car, so the Wagoneer comes in rear wheel drive or four wheel drive. The rear wheel drive is going to be the most fuel efficient. Um, you're getting about 16 city, 22 highway. The all wheel drive obviously changes, but it's just slightly, it's about 15 city, 20 highway. Um, the Grand Wagoneer has a different engine, has a bigger engine, so you're gonna have even more performance. But depending on how much you value performance, I mean, I feel like this is performing fine for me. I, I mean, I've driven all of the all of the full-size SUVs. I think it actually feels pretty similar to how the Escalade feels, honestly. Um, if you're kind of breaking down the differences, the Yukon, Suburban, and Tahoe are all V8s. The Expedition and the Navigator are six cylinders, so, but it's a, it's a turbo six, so, I prefer this drive better, but it's not quite as fuel efficient. Dang, those brakes are touchy. The steering is really tight. I really feel like I'm able to like corner things really well. And I mean, I'm so impressed. I think one thing I'm noticing the most is how quiet the vehicle is. Like it is really quiet. It's almost like too quiet. As far as my visibility goes, for as much as I like didn't love those rounded windows, they all, I mean, they offer some nice visibility. The back windshield is pretty large. I was kind of impressed to see, and maybe in the maybe in the bigger versions they have it where they have the rear view camera. Cause like if I had people sitting back there, I would have very limited visibility, especially if I had like adults. So I wish it had the camera. 
Um, but I mean, yeah, the windows are a good size. The windshield feels a little smaller compared to some of the other cars. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I don't know, guys. I'm not really a performance driver. I'm just trying to just give you what I think. And it's just my opinion. This is, these are my impressions. So if you have different impressions, please comment below about what you thought about the drive. Great safety features on the vehicle. We've got the blind spot. So in this car on the blind spot, there's little triangles down there that illuminate when someone's in your blind spot. It's got front occlusion warning. It's got automated cruise control. Automated cruise control is awesome. And I feel like people don't talk about it a lot, but basically what automated cruise control does is you can, it's, it's like cruise control. So like you set how fast you want to go, but then additionally you set how many car lengths you want to stay from the car in front of you. So you can set it at like 60 miles an hour with staying three car lengths uh, away from the car in front of you. And the car will speed up and slow down as needed, which I think is just awesome. I do really feel like I'm sitting up high. Mm -hmm. Seats are awesome, 14 way power seats. I mean, that's a lot of, that's a lot of seat adjustments. I think I could never get in the same position twice if I had to. So like, thank goodness it has memory seats. I would say my favorite thing about the drive is the handling. I really love like a tight steering. And I feel like I have a lot of control of the car. I like how heavy the car feels. I would say my least favorite thing is the braking, just very touchy. You think it's something you get used to? I mean, yes and no. I mean, the acceleration's insane. And it's smooth. And it stays like, smooth. it's so smooth and it stays like, it stays in the lane. Like, I, you know how like sometimes you have cars and like you feel like you have to like do everything in your power to keep them in? Like, no offense, the Wrangler. Yeah. Like when you're with a Wrangler, like if you so much as catch a breeze, you're in the other lane. This car feels solid. I think the display is nice. I think it's really user friendly. I really like that they pulled some of like those climate control features out of there as well as put them in the display just so you could kind of like have your own personal preference. Oh, there's different driving modes. We've got sand slash mud, snow, sport. Let's put her in sport mode. Whoa! So typically with a sport mode, um, depending on the model, you might notice like some changes in suspension and acceleration. I don't know, I was coming into here being like, I'm gonna hate the price point of this car, I can't believe it. I do not, and I have railed on a car like the Chevy Tahoe, for example, for being around this price, this price point and being so plasticky. I feel like I'm actually getting a huge car that performs great with a lot of great, not only technology, but also luxurious features. And we have ventilated seats in here, heated seats. But then in the same sense, on this trim level, I feel like some things were just complete afterthoughts. Like no sunshades. Yeah. It's a $72,000 car and you can put sunshades in. Like a sunroof. No sunroof. Even Not even the panoramic. Just to not even have like yeah. a single sunroof. I thought that was kind of an interesting choice. Especially for Jeep, who's right. makes You're, convertible cars. So it doesn't SUV, so it doesn't make sense. Yeah doesn't make sense. I also think it's, I think it's an interesting choice on Jeep to not, and maybe they will down the, down the line, but to not offer one with an extended wheelbase. Um, you know, if I think about all the other competitors, we've got the Ford Expedition Max, we got the Yukon XL, we have the Suburban, we have the um, Lincoln Navigator L. Like they all have the extended wheelbases except for this one. So like the trunk space you get is, is all that there is to offer. It's about 28 cubic feet, I believe, which isn't bad, but I mean, it's certainly not like take a family of eight on a road trip. You know, I mean, I feel like the average family going on a long road trip would have to probably put the third row down. So I just think that's kind of interesting to not even offer the extended version. But like I said, maybe they will eventually. Okay, guys, so that is going to wrap up just our quick little driving impressions. Um, if you've test driven one, we would love to hear your thoughts. And if you guys like these kinds of videos, or if you have any other things you'd like me to show while we're doing the driving impressions, let us know. We're kind of excited and we spent all the money on these GoPros, so we definitely want to make sure we're putting them to use. And I'll talk to you guys next time.